All right. So the first question I have for you is I'd like you to tell me a little bit about your early work on the theory of racism, structural racism in particular. So my first publication ever was an article titled Rethinking Racism Toward the Structural Interpretation. And the East interesting part for the audience, for your students, is to know that I drafted that article when I was in graduate school. And most people, most of my white uh, peers, didn't think much of what I was thinking and arguing. That continued when I became a professor in Michigan. So the first draft of the paper were not well received by my colleagues who thought I was wasting my time. And even when the paper was accepted in the American Sociological Review, which is the top journal in sociology, my, and that happened during my third year review, my chair did not believe the article was actually accepted. So I told him, do you want me to bring you the letter? I said, no, no, I believe you, but I'm curious because this doesn't seem like a, that a good of a work to appear in the top journal. So now a, 20 plus years later and 2,500 citations of the paper, but who's counting? Yeah? <laughs> uh, later, I think that I proved them wrong. But of course, as we're going to discuss today, when you talk about race critically, lots of folks are going to deny your argument. So I wasn't surprised uh, by their reluctance to accept my argument. Yeah, I have to give you, I got to give you props, though, I have to tell you, because as a graduate student, I would think it would be very difficult. That's a difficult period of time. And to have so many people push back and not, you know, not support what you're what you're thinking and where your work was going. And, you know, because it's easy to just sort of roll over and do what everyone else wants you to do. But you ended up producing one of the most seminal works out there in the area. And I just think it's I, I have to give you mad props and congratulations for that, because that's not an easy thing to do. Um, so I want you to tell me a little bit about how your work on structural racism changed the way that we view and the way that we talk about racism in the U.S. Because as you said, your colleagues were not were not necessarily thinking, oh, this, this is not really important work. This isn't going anywhere. What, why is it that they were thinking that? What was the, the dominant paradigm at that time? And how did your work change that? Well, I, I'm not sure if I changed much. I know I, I injected into discussion an alternative perspective. An alternative perspective that we people of color have been arguing incoherently at times for a century or more. Uh, and what I did was giving a conceptual apparatus of what we, the oppressed people, racially oppressed people of the world, endured. Yeah. So the reason why, I'm, I'm, of course, we all do the work we do without expecting that necessarily we will change the world. We hope, we hope to influence. And we ultimately want to live in a better world, but we know that we labor, particularly those of us on the critical race uh, camp, we labor in obscurity. Our work is deemed by the mainstream as political, which is the case of death, because presumably you have to be objective. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they assume that if you are a critical race scholar, that, that means you are a, a, a not objective, that you are a partisan and you are politically inclined. Yeah. So, okay, so that was, I already talked about the article and how that was initially not um, well received by my own colleagues and peers. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy to say that again, uh, uh, 25 years or so later, I have, I'm an influencer. <laughs> I, yeah, so I, I have influenced tons of undergraduate students, both in my classes and the people who use my, my work and ideas in their classes. I'm also happy I have graduated 20 plus PhDs and that counts mm -hmm. because then the work, the critical race scholarship will continue. And through my public interventions uh, and media appearances, I have then Im Im impacted a bunch of other people. So I'm happy to say that I'm an influencer on race matters in America. Nice, nice. 